Hey there, fellows. Okay. You might remember this machine of ours. We used it to shoot iPhones at a lot of... And it works very well. All seems to be in order after the last round of modifications. Anyway, let's get to the point. Now, we did ask you guys to send in your suggestions. Write your ideas as to what else we can launch using this machine. And the latest idea involves using wheels again. But this one is really good. Now, we are not simply going to be launching wheels this time. We'll be sending them over water. To do that, we'll need to drive out to a swamp, which we do actually have not too far away from us. So yeah, we can go ahead and use that to do what we need to do. Okay, I'd say that's enough with the chit-chat. Let's grab a couple of tires and head out to that swamp. Let's do this. Fellas, big thanks for taking so many pictures with our merch. You want some drip like this for yourself? Then check out our latest collection of merch. We've got some trendy hoodies, some toasty vests, stylish hats and t-shirts, baseball caps to suit anybody's taste, mugs, stickers, and of course some goodies for your cars. Air fresheners, license plate frames, document holders, key fobs. Hit the link in the description to get yourself some Garage 54 goodness. Get yourself some merch and don't forget to use the code Garage 54, which is good for a solid discount. Launching a wheel over water at 300 kilometers an hour, translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. All right, so here we are at that little swamp of ours. That's about 30 to 40 meters worth of water. Now, it doesn't seem all that deep, but after I take just a few steps away from land, these boots become absolutely useless. Now, I reckon the water is about as deep as this wheel is tall. Perhaps even a bit deeper. That's more than enough to get this off to a good start. So first, we need to send it in one direction and see how well that works. Work out whether the wheel prefers to stay above the water or go under. Though it might just refuse to go anywhere at all. But then we have the option of sending it through that there second body of water. That one is way deeper. That one we're gonna save for later, I mean... Nobody's gonna want to go diving underwater to recover the wheel. Right, so let's do a test in that direction first. See how that goes. And then we work our way from there. Let's do this. Okay, fellas, we've mounted the wheel. It's all looking good. We'll start with a normal sort of summer tire, keeping things simple for the time being. We've got the gearbox selector on too. Why not drive? Well, you might recall... How much was it? Six or five and a half? At about five and a half thousand revs, the wheel implodes and unseats itself, which is something we'd prefer to avoid. We'd much prefer it roll away, you know? Okay, let's go ahead and start the machine. And let the wheel rip. That was nice. Didn't get far, though. Did you see that? It bogged down in the water. It really didn't get far, did it? It was touching the bed early on with such shallow depth. It kicked up a bunch of sand and silt, and was only able to travel about 10 meters. That's not gonna do it for us. We need to try that again. In terms of grip, the summer tire is definitely lacking. Okay, so we've moved the machine away slightly, since before the rotation didn't have enough time to translate into speed, so we're gonna give it a bit more space to allow the wheel to pick up a better pace before it hits the water. That was too slow, but this time it'll be going faster. Nope. Still didn't get there. There was some spinny action, but the water with its density didn't let the tire with its lack of tread travel all that far, despite even the wheel's rotational speed. Maybe because it's a summer tire, it's just unable to effectively propel itself over the water's surface. 
Going over the sand, it was spinning just like it was when we launched it over grass. So that might have prevented it from picking up any sort of decent speed. Okay, well, we seem to be done with the summer tire. Let's try the winter wheel. Okay, so now we've fitted a winter tire. Problem is, that's a split welded rim. I guess we'll have to see how many revs it can take. As of yet, it is untested. You know, we did actually launch one of these. Wait, when did that happen? Into the white lada? Oh, really? Okay, let's try it here then, too. It only went slightly further. I am not impressed. I don't get it. It was carrying decent enough speed. It was spinning like crazy, but it stopped way short. Doesn't want to go far over water. Okay, let's try that one more time then. Once again, we'll be using the winter tire. It so happens that the tread is facing the wrong direction, but we don't really care. It is a winter tire. You know what I think? We should throw the gearbox into drive give the wheel a bit more momentum. Good! That was alright. Even if it was a bit short. You know, it appears that the water is pushing back. The wheel does not get far. You can clearly tell that it's spinning at a crazy speed. But it isn't able to use the water to propel itself. That sucks. But we do have more wheels to choose from. The next one is gonna be way more tenacious. Though it very well might hit the water at lower speed. Then again, I mean, that we can correct by moving the machine a bit further away to give it more space to roll out. Doesn't seem to grip the sand all that well. Right, so we've installed the wheel that we stuck a bunch of self-tappers into a while back. About 2,500 of them. I definitely remember it being 10,000 over four tires. Now this should have some phenomenal grip. I expect it to dig a trench all the way from here and... Uh, I don't know, to the river Ob, maybe? Alright, let's launch it and find that out, shall we? Well, I guess that was to be expected. <laughs> With so many screws attached, the tire fell apart. That's a bummer. And it took out the axle shaft. What do you know? No worries, we'll just have to head back to base and weld all of this up. We've merely identified another weak point. I mean, you saw how the whole thing was shaking and jumping around? Well, and these are the sorts of exceptionally remarkable results you get from that. Okay, so we've still got one crazy-ass wheel left, which we have no means of launching, though. I guess it's time for us to do a few repairs. After that, we're gonna send this flying. All right, we seem to be looking really good. We've restored the machine back to baseline. It's aligned and fitted with this here wheel, which is running some additional tread blocks. 
Now, the whole idea behind doing that was to improve its off-road performance. Now, there do seem to be enough of them attached. Now, it's all a matter of firing up the machine and throwing it into L. So, that's where we start. Now, you would have just seen the tire with 2500 self-tappers fly to bits. With all of that added weight and so many holes. This one doesn't have nearly as many bolts in it, but the tire itself... I gotta be honest. It is subpar, but okay. Let's spin this up without getting too carried away at first, and then work our way up. Hopefully this keeps it together. <laughs> All right, look at that. It has way more grip. But it's also much quicker to come to a halt. Now, I gather the low revs might have helped a bit with the grip. It began to dig in as soon as it hit the sand. And it was even able to pick up some decent speed. But it was pretty obvious that it started to lose momentum while it was still going over the sand. It lost a lot of its rotational speed while on its way to the water. Well, that said, we were taking it easy. I mean, we are trying to work out how far we can take this. So far, so good. I guess we can bring this up a notch. Okay, so look here. Instead of the one with the horizontal sort of tread blocks, we've got the one with them placed diagonally. Now, you might recall us using them on a lot of wagon a while back. That thing was able to go places a normal car would never be able to reach. Now, we've decided to try this one out in L also. We are going to be keeping it slow for starters to see how well the tire is even able to hold it together. After that, we are thinking about trying... Now, you guys saw how much grip those blocks provide, right? Now, we think the cannon needs to be brought closer to the water. Those blocks should allow the tire to effectively propel itself off of water, keep it from sinking, and ensure it goes the distance. But for now, let's go ahead and test the diagonal block tire. Let's do this. Hold on. The jack sunk into the sand. We need to try something different. Okay, so we've placed the jack in such a way so that it doesn't sink. And now it's time for another launch attempt. Holy cow! I'd say we almost even got somewhere. Holy cow! And that was with the gearbox in L. So far, the tire is holding up. It didn't fall apart yet. Like that other one did. Meaning we can increase the speed. But I mean, this was already a total success. Yes, it does hit the bed in the beginning. But if we look a bit further, the silt wasn't even disturbed. Which tells us that it was actually gliding over the water. Though there wasn't too much in the way of depth, but in any case, it was not touching the bottom. You can see that it did bring the silt up in the spot where it came to a halt. But on this stretch, which is about 7 meters long, the tire was actually rolling on water. So now we've reinstalled the diagonal block tire that gave us such good results. The gearbox is currently running in two. Let's try taking the tire up to a higher speed though we are slightly freaking out here. After that other tire blew up, 
Still, I mean, this is something we definitely need to try. Let her rip! Let it loose a bit early? Man, for a moment I thought it was starting to expand. I thought it was about to explode. But I guess I let it go too early. Okay. Let's give that another try. I mean, we can keep going until we run out of gas. Or tires. Which I hope we can avoid. We'll let it build a bit more revs this time. It did actually bottom out a few times on that run. As in, it wasn't gliding over the water. But it is going to be this time. Oh, this is super sketch. Wait, why isn't it shifting? Son of a bitch! It fell apart. I mean, the tire exploded. Here's the situation, fellas. More repairs ahead. Anyway, here's what happened. Yes, there was a horrible imbalance. The machine was jumping around as a result. We saw some horrendous vibration. And another tire bites the dust. And all because of the added weight. So yeah, it exploded. But the strip didn't come all the way off. Now, the self-tapper band stripped itself off completely, but here there was still a tail attached. And just look at what happened. It actually sheared the differential shaft. You can see how thick that was. But I mean, yeah, it couldn't handle the stress. So it is broken. Over there we've got a bent-up brake caliper. The mounting points on that are boned. But most notably, we finally killed that diff. Too bad. But hey, what can you do? Alright, I guess this is the end of the line then. Future launches are gonna require looking for a new differential. If you have any interesting suggestions for us. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, this all started with a summer tire. Yes, it can easily be spun up to high speed, but it just doesn't want to propel itself over sand or water. Straight away it just sinks. And it's the same story with the winter tire, though that I think might have gripped the sand a bit better. Still though, once in the water it was touching the ground. We got nowhere with the screwy tire, with it immediately blowing up. As for the one with the horizontal blocks, we just weren't that impressed. Granted, we were taking it easy. But now let's talk about the diagonal block tire we made for off-roading. Now, we actually saw some solid results with that one. You remember what happened, right? There was no way to keep it from losing momentum. Especially with water being such a dense fluid. From the machine and all the way to a rather deep spot, the wheel was actually staying above the waterbed. Which you all saw for yourselves. It traveled a good 7 to 10 meters, I'd say. Gliding over the water's surface, might I add. Okay, fellas, you requested we send a wheel gliding over water. Well, and we did. Yes, it only went a mere 10 meters. Which isn't 100, but it ran on water. And that's what matters. Very nice. You guys keep those suggestions coming. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, comments, give us a big thumbs up. We read the comments, I promise. All right, catch you later.